Hi, I'm Ed from Wright, and today we're going to do a front to back look at the standard ZK, similar to the ZXL video that we did a couple weeks ago on our midsize rider. Uh, the ZK has been out for a long time. It's a second generation model at this point, and so it's very, you know, refined. Um, and we've made a couple tweaks this year, which I'll highlight as we go front to back. First off, the ZK, all of our mowers have a project name when we start out, and then once we come to market, we come up with a name for it. The standard ZK actually kept its project name, and it was originally, the project was Zero Turn Killer, Z Killer. Um, and the reason we call that is because back at that time, um, every stand on mower was a upsized walk behind kind of a machine. And we wanted to take a machine that, uh, the stand on format, and turn it into a machine that had the full capability of a rider. And today we've actually found that the stand on format allows us to create even more capability than a lot of riders. And so right here we have a 61 inch Kawasaki in front of us. It's the same base chassis that we used to build the autonomous mower. Um, and you can get it in a 72 inch deck. You can put the dually kit on it, dually air tires, dually pneumatic tires, um, 37 horsepower engines. And you can go all the way down to a 52 inch deck, which is a real favorite with folks that want a lot of power. Maybe they're mulching. Um, they want the, the fuel, dual fuel tank runtime but you still need to get in tight areas. And that 52 is just a really, really nimble machine. So we're gonna take off the deck covers and the guards, open it up and go front to back on the machine. Okay, starting on the front here, we have the 13 by six and a half inch wide Carlisle tire. The same tire we use on a lot of machines. This tire we believe is really the best for this chassis. A couple reasons. One is you can get tires that are more domed um, and they swivel a little easier, but they tend to shimmy at high speeds and they're bumpier because um, they're kind of getting one read on the ground versus a bigger average read on the ground. Also, in wet conditions, uh, these flatter profile tires are less prone to rutting. There are a couple people who run bigger tires, like 14, 16 inches, but I don't like those bigger tires because they make the machine so much longer. I think the 13 by 650 really is the ideal size um, tire. And up here we have our standard caster pin. Again, we have this little bolt here, which has a 28 pitch thread, which is the same as a grease fitting. We don't ship them with grease fittings because they get broken off real easily. And temptation is to over grease them a bunch and blow the seal out. Um, you really don't need to service this unless you're seeing residue down here. Maybe check on it once or twice a year. When you install the cap, it's good to put a drop of bearing retainer or Loctite in there to help keep the cap sealed on there tight. Um, on this particular machine, we have the um, an accessory on it. This accessory here is for the trimmer holster, so you can drop your trimmer in there um, if you got to get to the back of a property with a trimmer, something like that. This here is a 61 inch deck. Most of our decks all have this bridge going across it, and that bridge creates a lot of stiffness in the whole chassis, um, which helps helps the belt, uh, the deck last longer uh, over its life. Uh, this machine here, it has the six inch double bearing idler pulley which is really good. These last a real long time. And we have the twin belt design here. So this belt here is driving the blade. This is the tension side as it spins. This one going to the engine, that's the tension span. This is the slack side going over there. So by having two belts here, we don't have to have any idler pulleys on the tension side, which significantly extends the life of the machine. The other thing I'll point out about this machine here is the engine and the cutter deck move up and down together. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, and we do, we have both approaches on different models. But for this model, uh, it's pump and motor, and so when it goes up and down, the hoses flex to the wheels and allows our belts to be completely flat to the engine the whole time. Does mean a more complex design because the engine's mov moving up and down, but it's real good on the belts. Uh, the AeroCore deck is a standard 61 inch AeroCore deck. Um, the battery, you can access it pretty easily without any tools. A change that we made a little while back is the muffler here used to directly mount to the cylinder head. We now have a separate bracket going to the muffler and allows this bracket to be more firmly affixed to the engine. And these holes here actually have a little slot in there to make up um, different uh, tolerance in the muffler weldment. And so overall, it's a better mounting setup. On this here, we have the FX850. It's a very tried and true engine, carbureted engine, pretty bulletproof. We also offer the 37 horsepower engine, which looks a lot like that, but it, that's a 40. Um, the, by the way, the 40 and the 37, the engine block is identical. The only difference is the fuel system. The 40 has EGOV and um, 
The 37 has a mechanical governor. But we offer the 37 on this chassis here as well. Um, and usually that's more for a 61 or 72 inch. Usually if you're in 52, we oftentimes see more Kawasaki's. Um, and it's, some of it's a preference or, you know, what your dealer is very familiar with working on. Um, come around the side of the engine here, you can see the oil drain here. You loosen this here and there's a clear shot below the machine. So you need a low profile oil pan, you slide it in there. It's pretty easy to service that on this model. Here we've got the parking brake. And like many of our machines, when you pull up the parking brake, there's a little locking tab here locks out your controls mechanically so you can't drive off the machine with the with the brake on and this brake here goes down to the wheel motor and that wheel motor there has a wet disc brake in it it's a real strong brake um, which works quite well on this model the fuel system here it's dual tanks 15 half gallons um, and just you know something that sometimes I hear a little confusion on is there's a gauge on the left tank and a lot of our machines are this way there's a gauge on the left tank, and there isn't a gauge on this tank. And down here, there's a check valve here, and a here, and a T. And then there's a fuel shutoff right before it goes in the engine up there. So this is your total system shutoff. There's no left-right valve. Some of our older machines had a left-right valve, but it's really not great to run out of engine uh, of gas on one tank, especially of an EFI engine. And it's it's kind of a hassle versus you know drawing from both tanks simultaneously. Uh, but if you draw from both tanks simultaneously, you have to bottom draw to a T um, in order to get everything to work right. Now, the, the reason for the check valves is that if the hill's parked, if the motor's parked on the hill, all the fuel can run from the upper tank to the lower tank. We don't want that to have, happen. We want both tanks um, to feed in equally. So what happens here is if you fill up this side, the gauge will read full, but the, not this side yet. And so due to gravity, this side will run down until it matches the other side and then both sides come down together. So um, if, you, for, if you want to fill your tank in the most conservative fashion, you fill up the right and then the left. Or if you just have five gallons, you only add it to the left. So this gauge will read your worst case scenario instead of your best case scenario. Okay, so um, moving into the control system here, we have our quad lever controls. The reason we like quad lever controls is it's just so much easier to walk up to the machine and go. Some mowers have two stationary bars, but what happens is you have to lean forwards more like this far up here the whole time you're driving versus being able to be in the center position. And then these up here serve a dual purpose. If you're gonna go backwards for a long while, it's easier to grab these, get a little bit better control. Um, but also, if you're driving along and you bump into a tree limb or something, your knuckles don't get smashed by that. What happens is that bar up there protects your knuckles and it'll actually push back and stop the machine from driving forwards on, on its own. So there's some protection that's provided up there. Okay, moving down here to the control system, we have these control hinges, which is a unique design. So when the deck moves up and down, you can see those hinges moving along and then forwards and backwards, right? And so we get a good, strong connection from the hand controls to the pumps. Responsiveness of the machine is really good. And over, you know, thousands of hours, all those linkages maintain a good tight feel. Uh, moving into the hydros here, it's a pump and motor system. We've got 16 cc pumps and 15 cubic inch wheel motors. And um, these reservoirs here hold, um, this is just an overflow reservoir. Most of the oil is actually inside the wheel motor. So the wheel motor, if we can get that in the picture here, the wheel motor um, holds about two quarts of oil and there's some oil that sits in the pump. And the way you change the oil, you spin off the filter there and it, and it has access to just drain to the, underneath the machine right there to pan. That's your drain point. You open that up, drains out, and then you fill it up here. And the reason we have two lines here is it makes your oil change go a lot quicker because the oil can go down one line, air comes up the other line. Um, now, these little reservoirs, you don't want them very full. You want them to be just about near the minimum when it's cold. And um, if it's too much, it'll slosh a little bit uh, around. Um, if you ever have dust collecting excessively on one of these, what you need to do is switch your two caps. And if the other one starts getting collecting dust, then your cap gasket may have an issue. If the original one continues to collect dust, 
then most likely there is a nick at some point on the edge of this mounting here and you can either file that out or replace it if required. It's something unfortunately we see from time to time. Some of our other new models we've moved to metal tanks um, which are much more costly but um, we put a, uh, a cap into a coupler type uh, setup there. Now the pumps here, it's a hydro gear pump, very reliable, durable, reliable setup. This is your bypass so you can unscrew these and uh, push them all around if required. Now the platform comes with four, where are we here? It comes with four elastomers. There's two here and two on the other side. And that's actually a pretty stiff configuration. Um, if you're a little bit lighter guy, I would take out one or two of them and you'll get a lot softer ride on the machine. Um, just depends on, on your average operator weight. Um, down underneath here, you can see the pump drive. Compared to a lot of machines, this pump drive is easier to access um, because of it being a pump and motor system, the pumps sit on the top and so there isn't a transmission blocking lower access to them, which is kind of nice. Here we have the height select, so we can go from inch and a half to five and a half inches uh, without any belt deflection. So this machine here, it's the real workhorse of our lineup. Um, very versatile. A uh, couple other accessories that you can get for it. So uh, we'll link some part numbers and stuff in the in the uh, description here, but um, as a 61 or 72, you can get a standard twill, which will give you approximately this offset. Now, twill also came out with one that has it, it's further set in, and it will fit the 52 and 61 inch decks. That's a newer thing. Those of you who are familiar with this, we used to offer a flip kit. You would do some things to the hub and you could take the one for the 61 and flip it around. You don't have to do that anymore. We offer a twill specifically uh, for this. Now on a 72, you can get dual 24 by 12 twills, or you can get the dual uh, air tires on, on a 72. And here's the thing, on a 72, okay, so here's here's our cut edge, so we just have maybe an inch or whatever. Um, and by the, way, by the way, this is not a proven configuration yet with the autonomous with the 72. We're just doing some field testing with it. Um, but the great thing about duels here is you reduce your prior tire pressure to like maybe 10 PSI because you've got that much ground pressure. Um, and what happens is you, you can't really gouge the deck very easily because your tire is out here close to the edge. And the other thing is your inside tires are much closer together and so you don't uh, dip in holes or scalp things very much either. So um, originally the duels were for hillside work but we found that uneven flat ground um, has a lot of advantages. Um, we offer a mulch kit, so all the autonomous mowers come with one installed, but other mowers um, all have mulch kits available. Uh, we also have a light kit that includes um, the switch. So the switch, newer models behind the label, there's a cutout somewhere in here. And so you can knock that knockout. Uh, we offer a harness that includes the switch and the fuse and the light mounting kit. And so you can put the LED lights on this as well. So that's a rundown of the ZK. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you. And by all means, if you have any questions, just let us know. We'd be glad to answer. Thanks. Have a good one.